Hello, my name is Lovella de los Santos and today I'll be doing an H-E-E-M-T exam video. But before that, I'm gonna do a room scan. Santos and today I'll be doing a thorough examination of your head, your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your throat along with the related structures on it. But before that, I want to ask for your verbal consent if you will allow me to record you on video and upload it to YouTube as unlisted so that my professor can view it and grade it. Is that okay? Yes. Perfect. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and perform hand hygiene first. Okay, can you tell me your name and date of birth? Alexis Montelegre, April 26, Nigeria, Japan. All right, perfect. And how old are you, Alexis? 20. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and inspect your hair distribution. So I can see that your hair is well distributed. I don't see any uh, thinning, patterns of uh, hair loss. I don't see any alopecia or baldness. I'm also checking the texture of your hair. It's wavy and... I don't see any oiliness or dryness and I can see that the shape of your head is normal sopalic. I don't see any deformities or trauma so it's normal sopalic and it's atraumatic. I'm also checking, um, actually I'm gonna palpate your head so, so I'm gonna palpate your head now and as I'm palpating it I'm checking for the size of your head. It's actually proportioned to your body and the contour of your head is smooth and um, round there's no signs of any deviation i don't feel any c's lesions depressions or hematomas so which is good um so now i'm gonna go ahead and check for your visual acuity so the visual acuity will actually check for your cranial nerve number two which is optic and I have your pocket smelling chart. So this is a six feet away. So I want you to read the smallest line that you can read while covering one of your eyes. So I'm giving you this. So cover your right eye and read the smallest line that you can read. L T F T H. Perfect. And cover your uh, left eye. L T F T H. And then without covering it, can you read the smallest line? L T F. Yeah. Perfect. So you have a 2020 vision, Alexis. So it means that you can read at 20 feet distance what a normal person can read at 20 feet. All right. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and check, uh, uh, inspect a general inspection of your eyes. So I'm going to go right here behind you and see if there's any actual projection. So there's none. It means that um, you don't have any exophthalmos. I, I don't see any eyelid drooping or ptosis, uh, your eyelashes is actually um, well distributed, there's no sign of liberitis, there's no sign of ectropion and ectropion, and your blink reflex is actually normal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check your conjunctiva, let me see. All right, so it's nice, moist, and pink and healthy. I don't see any signs of um, hemorrhage, hematuria, or any drainage. I also don't see any obstruction or uh, foreign bodies on it. And you gotta check your lacrimal system. So your lacrimal um, uh, puncta has no obstruction and your lacrimal apparatus has no signs of any swelling. Again, the puncta, there's no obstructions, there's no uh, excessive tearing or dryness, all right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for the sclera of your eyes, let me see. All right, so the sclera of your eyes is white and there's no signs of discolorations. There's no jaundice and there's no icterus. I don't see any, um, any abnormal vascularization of your sclera. Um, now checking your iris, it's uh, pretty much symmetrical in color and shape. And then your pupil is round and reactive. I don't see any abnormalities on your iris that just such as a heterochroma 
and your pupil has no irregularities. I'm also checking for your cornea. So your cornea is transparent and clear. There's no sign of um, opacities, scarring, or any discharge. So it's all good. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and illuminate your eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and check a uh, direct light reflex to check if your pupil will constrict while I'm illuminating it or shining it. All right. All right. Perfect. The, the direct light reflex in direct light reflex your pupil constrict from five to three. Go ahead and do it on the other side. All right, it constrict from five to three, so it's all normal findings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for the consensual light reflex. So meaning I'm gonna check if your uh, opposite side of your pupil constrict while I'm shining uh, the other side. All right. All right. Your consensual light reflex, it constricts from 5 to 3 as well. All right, on the other side. All right, the opposite side constricts from 5 to 3 as well. So it's all normal finding. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and check for um, extraocular motion. So the extraocular motion is actually checking for cranial nerve number 3. Four and six. So cranial nerve number three is the oculomotor. Cranial nerve number four is the trochlear, and cranial nerve number six is the abducens. So I'm gonna go ahead and perform the six cardinal direction of gaze. So I, I want you to look at this pen and follow it. Okay, follow it with your eyes. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. Perfect. Cranial nerve number three, oculomotor, is intact. Cranial nerve number six, abducens is intact. Cranial nerve number four, trochlear is intact. Cranial nerve number three, oculomotor is intact. Cranial nerve number six, uh, abducens is intact. And then cranial nerve number four, trochlear is intact. So perfect. As you can see, the conjugate movement of my patient is actually normal and there's no nystagmus and there's no lead lag. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for your, the convergence of your eyes. This is to test for the coordinations of your eye movement. So go ahead and look at this pen as I move it forward to your nostrils or nose bridge. And then let me check if your eyes will cross. All right, perfect. So uh, you have a good coordinations of your eye movement. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for the accommodation of your eyes. So look at this pen, and then look at my shoulder, and then look at the wall behind it, and then look at my pen again. All right, so your eyes accommodates, meaning accommodation actually refers to the ability of our eye to adjust its focus at a different distance, clearly, all right? Perfect, all right, now, I'm gonna go ahead and test for a uh, confrontation test. So the confrontation test is actually to test for uh, peripheral vision. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to cover one of your eyes, all right? So I'm gonna check your left eye to see. So I'm gonna wiggle my finger and tell me when you see my wiggle finger, okay? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this side? Yes. All right, perfect. So on his left side, uh, his visual field is 180 degree, which is a normal finding. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the right side. Cover your left eye. All right. Tell me when you see my finger wheel. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect? Yes. Perfect, all right. So on his right side, it's 180 degree. Again, the visual field is 180 degree and it's all normal finding. Go ahead and uncover your eyes and then I'm gonna test your peripheral vision without covering your eyes, okay? Yes. Perfect? Yes. Yes. All right, perfect. So without covering his eyes, his peripheral vision is 180 degree and it's all normal findings, right? Perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do an examination using the ophthalmoscope, right? So this is the ophthalmoscope, but before that, um, the first thing that I need to do is to dim the light. But for the purpose of this video, I will just pretend that I dim the light. So I'm dimming the light, and then 
put the diopter to zero for uncorrected eye. And now I'm gonna ask my patient to look at the distance so that his pupil will dilate while I'm shining it with my um, ophthalmoscope. So now Alexis, uh, from actually from 15 degree lateral, I'm gonna hold my uh, ophthalmoscope with my right hand because I'm checking his right eye and I'm also using my right eye. So from the 15 degree lateral, I'm going to shine your pupil, okay? with my ophthalmoscope and then I'm gonna use my uh, left hand to for safety to hold his eyebrow so that when I move forward and look closer it's safe and has balance okay all right so I'm gonna shine it all right and then I now I see the red light reflex and then I'm gonna follow the red light reflex so the red light makes us as a red orange glow and then I'm following it to check for your um, optic disc. So now I am uh, moving closer and following the red reflex. Now I see the um, optic disc, like uh, it's a yellow, orange to creamy pink in color. I can see the, that it's sharp, it has a sharp margin and the central physiologic cup to this ratio is one to three. And then I'm seeing the arteries. It is uh, brighter, smaller, and light red in color. And the uh, uh, veins is larger and darker, and has a dark red color. And then I also see the the macula, which is uh, responsible for central vision. And then I see the the rod, which is responsible for night vision. I also see the uh, fovea, which is actually the depression in the central of the macula responsible for the color vision. And then um, I also see that the cornea, the lens of the cornea has uh, no opacities, all normal. There's no scarring. I don't see any hemorrhage or any signs of abnormalities on his eyes all right perfect now i'm gonna go ahead and check the other eye so i'm gonna use my left hand since i'm checking his left eye all right so again from 15 degree lateral i'm gonna ask you to look at the distance again i'm gonna use my right hand to hold his head for safety and then i'm gonna shine again your uh left pupil and then I'm going to follow the red light reflex, all right? So I'm, I'm moving forward, looking closer as I follow the red reflex and see the uh, optic disc with, again, yellow, yellowish orange in color to creamy pink. And then I'm checking the uh, central physiologic cup to this is also one to, to three in ratio. And also seeing now the arteries, I see the veins, uh, same description as I, what I said a while ago. And then I checking the macula, it's responsible again for her, you know, central vision. I see the rod, the fovea, and I see that the cornea has no opacities, there's no scarring, and there's no sign of hemorrhage, there's no infection. All right, everything is normal on his eyes. All right, perfect, Alexis, thank you so much. All right, we're done with your eyes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and inspect your nose. So I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the external part of your nose. I can see that there's no signs of redness, swelling, or any lesion. I'm checking the septum. It's uh, in the midline and it's perfectly normal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your nose, okay? Do you feel any tenderness or swelling? No. All right. Yes. All right. So I don't also feel any uh, bony irregularities. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your sinuses. Um, now I'm palpating the frontal sinus. Do you feel any tenderness, pain, or um, pressure and fullness? No. No. Okay. I'm, now I'm gonna palpate your um, 
ma uh, maxillary sinuses. Do you feel any pain, pressure, or fullness? No. No? All right. So there's no pressure, there's no pain, there's no fullness. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the internal part of his uh, nose. Wait, shiny. All right. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to check the internal part of your nose. I can see that your nasal mucosa is nice and moist. I don't see any uh, redness, swelling, and any lesions. I don't see any swollen turbinates. I don't see any polyps. I don't see any septal deviation, so which is good. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check the patency of your nose. I want you to occlude one of your nasal passages and then check if you can breathe clearly. Yes. Yes, okay. Go ahead and do it on the other side. Right. So the reason why I want you to check that because we will be checking for your cranial nerve number one, which is the olfactory nerve. So we will test your uh, your ability to smell. So uh, go ahead and close your eyes. All right. Go ahead and close your eyes, and then um, I want you to tell me what you smell. Uh, occlude one of your uh, nose. Oh, yeah, one of your nasal passages, and tell me what is this? Eucalyptus. All right, perfect. This is eucalyptus. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and occlude the other side. All right, tell me what is this? Eucalyptus. Okay, perfect. All right. So his cranial nerve number one is actually intact. All right, so now let, moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and check your uh, gross hearing. So uh, I'm gonna check your cranial nerve number eight, which is the vestibular cochlear. I'll be checking uh, using the um, whisper test, Weber test, and Ryan test. But let's go ahead and do the whisper test first. So with whisper test, I'm gonna occlude one of your ear. Uh, as well as your tragus, and then from two feet away, I'm gonna whisper and tell me what you hear, okay? Nine CR. Nine CR. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side. All right. Okay, gonna go ahead and do it. All right, two feet away, I'm gonna. FP3. All right. So his cranial nerve number eight, vestibular cochlear is intact. So now I'm going to go ahead and check for the laterization or equalization of your ear, of your hearing. So I'm going to go ahead and use this tuning fork. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on your forehead and tell me uh, where you can hear the sound. Both my ears. All right. So um, he can hear it on both of his ear, so it's normal. It's a normal finding and there's no hearing loss. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for your uh, check the for your uh, conductive hearing loss. So I'm gonna do the rhyme test using the tuning fork again. All right, I'm gonna use it and then put this on your mastoid bone. Tell me when you cannot hear it. I can't hear it. And then how about here? Yes. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side. Okay, what do you, tell me when you cannot hear it. No. All right, how about here? Yes. Perfect, so his air conduction is greater than bone conduction, meaning there's no conductive hearing loss. Okay, that's the rhyme test. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, inspect the external part of your ear, okay? So, as I'm checking it, there's no, I don't see any swelling, there's no lesion or any form of abnormalities. I don't see any crusting or any irregularities on the external part of your ear. And now I'm going to go ahead and palpate it. Okay. Do you feel any tenderness and pain here? No. No? And I'm going to go ahead and palpate your tragus as well. Do you feel any pain? No. All right, perfect. So there's no pain, there's no swelling, which is good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my 
uh, otoscope, all right, to check for the internal part of your ear, all right. So I'm going to hold um, the otoscope with my right hand with my with uh, my thumb and finger, okay? okay? So because you're an adult, I'm going to check your right ear first. So what I'm going to do, because you're an adult, I'm going to pull up your pina, uh, pull up and backward. And then I'm going to go ahead and gently... Um, Insert the speculum into your ear canal, the external ear canal, and now I'm checking it. I don't see any cerumen buildup. I don't see any swelling, redness, or lesion. I don't see any discharge. Now I'm checking for your tympanic membrane. I see that it's pearly gray. I don't see any perforations. There's no bulging. I don't see any discharge or any fluid. And then now I see the um, manubrium and the handle of the malleus, which is responsible for the hearing. And I also uh, see the ambo, which is radiating a cone of light at five o'clock. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check the other side. So I'm using my left hand now, okay? And I'm holding it with my uh, thumb and finger on my left hand. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull your pinna up and backwards again, and then gently insert the speculum, holding one of my pinky on your face for safety. All right. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and check again, insert the speculum in your ear canal, your external ear canal, and then checking any, if there's any cerumen buildup, I don't see any cerumen buildup. There's no redness again, there's no swelling, there's no tenderness. I don't see any lesions or any um, signs of infection. I'm also checking for your tympanic membrane here. It's pearly gray and I don't see any perforations. There's no bulging. And I see the handle of malleus, um, which is uh, again responsible for our hearing. And then I see the amble, which is radiating a cone of light at seven o'clock. All right, perfect. All right. All right, now we're done with um, your ears. Now I'm gonna go ahead and inspect your, your, your mouth, okay? So I'm check first I'm going to check your lips. So I can see that your lips is healthy it's pink, it's, uh, there's, it's hydrated, and I don't see any crusting or any lesions, ulcers, any, um, any scaling, so it's all good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check your buccal mucosa, okay? So I'm just putting a glove so that I can check your uh, mouth. Now go ahead and open your mouth and all right, so I'm checking your buccal mucosa. It's nice and thick and healthy. It's also well hydrated. And then when I touch it, it's smooth to touch. And I don't see any redness, swelling, or any lesions, or any signs of infection. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for your salivary duct. So the, your salivary duct is actually the parotid duct or the stenson duct is actually created at the upper near the upper molar and then your uh, submandibular duct or the Wharton's duct is actually located underneath your tongue. So I can see your salivary opening and it's, cl it's clear. I don't see any presence of uh, blood. There's no discharge. There's no signs of any infection, which is really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and check for your gingiva. Okay, so I see that your gingiva is nice and pink. It's firm and tight, and it's holding the, um, the teeth very well. And actually, uh, your gingiva has no signs of hypertrophy or any signs of infection or enlargement. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check your teeth. So your teeth is up white, and there's no signs of any crusting or rough spots. There's no missing teeth. I don't see any dentures or caries. 
I don't see any plaques or tartar, all right? Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and check your tongue. So come, let me check your tongue, all right? So the tongue is in the midline. I don't see any swelling, redness, or enlargement. I don't see any lesion, any pus. I don't see anything like that. I also see the papillae. The papillae is well distributed and the size is like one millimeter. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for the strength and deviation of your tongue. So with this test, it's actually, I'm actually checking for um, cranial nerve number 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve. So go ahead and stick out your tongue. All right, so um, the tongue is again in midline. The, uh, the lingual frenulum is actually intact. And um, there's no signs of weakness or deviations on his tongue. So the cranial nerve number uh, 12 is actually intact and his tongue is, can actually move freely without any uh, effort. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead. Okay and check for the uh, soft palate and the uvula. Go ahead and open your mouth and I'm gonna check your soft palate and uvula. So the soft palate is uh, red, uh, no, I mean it's pink, nice and moist, it's symmetrical. There's no signs of infections, redness or any lesion, so which is good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for your um, swallowing and um, that's for your cranial nerve number 10. So I'm checking actually for cranial nerve number 9 and 10. So cranial nerve number 9 is to test for uh, his swallowing. So go ahead and swallow. All right. Is there any difficulty in swallowing? No. No. Okay. Perfect. So since there's no difficulty in swallowing, his cranial nerve number 9, which is the glossopharyngeal nerve, is intact. Now I'm going to go ahead and check for the uh, cranial nerve number 10, which is the vagus nerve. So go ahead and open your mouth, and stick out your tongue and say, ah! Uh. All right, perfect. So cranial nerve number 10 is intact. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and check for your pharynx and tonsils. So go ahead and open your mouth. All right. So I can see that your pharynx is patent. Uh, there's no signs of swelling. There's no uh, signs of lesions or any deformities. It's nice and healthy i'm also looking at your tonsils so uh, your tonsil is at grade one there's no obstructions and there's no discharge and no signs of any infections or abnormalities so that's good all right so we're actually uh done with your uh mouth uh, what else? Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and check for, uh, is there any pain with your neck? No. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and let me, uh, fo so follow me. So we'll be doing a range of motion, okay, on your neck. So let's uh, go ahead and flex your neck downward like this, all the way with your chin. And then go ahead and hyper extend it all the way to the air. So. All right, is there any pain that you feel? No. no. All right, go ahead and do the lateral motion. All right, and then on the other side. And then go ahead, do the lateral rotations like this. All right. All right, perfect. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and check for your cranial nerve number 11, which is the accessory. Um, so I'm going to check for uh, your resi the resi uh, pressure against resistance. So go ahead and rotate your uh, your head, and then I'm I'm going to put my um, like my hands over it, and then put pressure. On it. Is there any pain? No. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and I'll do it on the other side. Anything? Okay. This is actually also testing for the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shrug your shoulder. All right, perfect. Okay, it's also testing for resist, uh, pressure against resistance. It's also uh, testing for cranial nerve number 11, which is the accessory. Okay, so now we're done with the uh, neck rotation. Now we're, I'm going to palpate your lymph nodes, okay? Okay, so first I'm going to palpate your 
uh, pre-auricular lymph nodes. This is actually small uh, and mobile and non-palpable. I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your post-auricular lymph nodes. It's also soft, mobile, and non-palpable. Go ahead and palpate your uh, occipital lymph nodes. All right. Uh, it's also non-palpable. And then I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your um, posterior cervical lymph nodes and then your anterior cervical lymph nodes. It's all non-palpable. And then I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your submental lymph nodes and then your submandibulary lymph nodes. So the submandibulary uh, lymph nodes actually is palpable even with healthy individuals. And the one that is not palpable is the supra uh, supraclavicular lymph nodes. So if ever someone feels um, lymph nodes here, uh, there are some certain disease connected to it. So, so this one it's non-palpable. Okay, the supraclavicular lymph nodes. All right. Now I'm go gonna go ahead and check for your trachea, pl the placement of your trachea. Okay. So in in your trachea there is no uh, tracheal deviation, and it's in the midline. And I don't see any uh, enlargement or and nodules or any signs of abnormalities. Okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and check for your thyroid. On the tangential view, I'm going to inspect your thyroid. Okay? So I don't see any abnormalities on your thyroid. There's no enlargement. There's no um, uh, goiter. I don't see any goiter. And then on the other side, yeah, I don't see any abnormalities, no enlargement, and go ahead and lift up your, um, I'm going to go ahead and inspect and visualize your thyroid. Can you swallow? All right, so as he swallows, I can see the co coordinated movement of his thyroid while he's swallowing, so which is a normal finding, and I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, check the placement of his thyroid before I palpate it. So I'm gonna put the my finger on his mentalis muscle and then I'm gonna go ahead and move uh, down until I feel the thyroid cartilage. And then from the below the thyroid cartilage is the cricoid cartilage. And below the cricoid cartilage is the tracheal ring. So I can feel the tracheal ring here and then Above that tracheal ring is the thyroid isthmus. So now I'm going to palpate the thyroid. So can you sit up in this side so that I can show the palpation of your thyroid? So now I'm putting my finger on the thyroid isthmus and then I'm gonna ask my patient to swallow. Can you swallow? All right, so now I feel the thyroid isthmus rising in between my fingers. So I don't feel any nodules. I don't feel any enlargement of the thyroid glands. Uh, and I don't feel any uh, abnormalities or any signs of irregularities. So um, his thyroid is actually normal. All right, I think that concludes our assessment, the HEENT uh, exam video. So that's it. Thank you so much.